Hello, and welcome to the 60 for 30 project. My name is Xander. I'm sitting here with <laughs> Kelly Griffin. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm awake this morning. It's uh, <laughs> still summer, one week before school starts. So. Oh my gosh, we're already at school teachers. starting. Yeah, oh, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So what area of Kenosha are you from, or what area did you grow up in? So I originally grew up on the south side of Kenosha by Governor Elementary. Um, my family moved there when I was about a year and a half, and my parents still live there. And so I went to Gravenel, Lincoln, and Tremper. So I had a diverse little bit background by being able to go to Lincoln, and my parents made us walk to school every day. So we Ooh. went through the Lincoln neighborhood, which I always like love, and I still love going through Lincoln neighborhood. And then I went to Tremper, and then after that, I went to the University of Nebraska Lincoln. So I moved away from Kenosha for four years and loved it. It was a, an amazing experience at 18 years old to kind of pick up your life and move somewhere where no one knows you and to get a great education. Um, so my degree is in modern dance and I have a minor in child youth and family studies. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. How, how far was that walk, by the way, for the for school? Um, it was about a very cold mile in the Ooh. winter months. So when we had to go, I'd be like, when it was really cold, I'm like, Dad, please drive us to school. It's so cold. But it was it was a lot of fun. And all the kids in the neighborhood, there was my four best girlfriends. We lived on the same block. So we'd have like how we picked each other up. So one girl would come to my house, I'd go to the next person's house, and then we go the other, and then we walk to school. So we wow. all felt really safe walking together, too. Okay. So Groups and numbers is what we've always learned at a young age. You always go, wherever you go, you go in a group. You don't go mm -hmm. by yourself. Yeah. And what area of Kenosha are you in now? So I currently live, I just moved about a month ago to the north side of Kenosha. I bought my own place in this crazy housing market we have <laughs> because everyone's like, it's a seller's market instead of a buyer's. But I was really fortunate with how I ended up in my place. So I live kind of over by Parkside and I absolutely love the north side. It's more quiet the south side's like a little busy and I always feel like you're hearing stuff going on and so it's a big change for me to like be able to hear silence it's like very strange but I really love where I live right now okay yeah. that's awesome yeah so how have you experienced Kenosha's culture or what is Kenosha's culture to you it's a great question because I think how I view Kenosha is always gonna be different than someone else views Kenosha I see Kenosha as a very diverse community that's rooted in its own history where it will take you back to the old days where you had all the car units or where the cars were built and like on the downtown it was a middle class town and I still see it as that too because I feel like we are middle class but we're mm -hmm. more diverse within our middle class. So with working, I work at Bradford High School so I see a lot of diversity within our students and our kids backgrounds. and it still is rooted within Kenosha's old history. Um, I've been very into history since I was little. My um, grandfather owned Hanson Lemon Funeral Home, so the big pink building that was in Library Park, if you've ever been there. Um, yeah. It was super cool. He is not a part of it anymore. He retired a while ago, but um, that part of Kenosha's history is where I started to love history more and to get to know that part of our history and how our town was built and why we are the way that we are and why we're ever evolving and always changing. So I guess what about the history is have you seen Kenosha wise? I know you mentioned the fact factories and being kind of self-contained history. What yeah. have you seen of that and how has that history I guess developed Kenosha's culture more, more specifically? So I remember I think it was elementary school we I don't know if you've been here like went to school in Kenosha but we had a it was, I don't remember what grade it was, but we learned about Kenosha's specific history and certain people within Kenosha's history. So I, how important Mary D. Bradford is, how, there's a few other names and I'm like drawing a blank right now, but um, I just think that part and why it's such a solid foundation of Kenosha's history has evolved. So like how, let's talk about how downtown has evolved to where it is now. I remember when I was younger, you didn't go downtown. If you wanted to go anywhere, you were going out to Pleasant Prairie and having dinner out there or something. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that we try to make our historic downtown the way it is and how we're trying to create that throughout the rest of our city and to continue to what it is. So you had the AMC, GMC, Chrysler, all of those factories 
we were a factory town for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So the fact that that is still, people will come into where I work sometimes because I work multiple jobs. They're like, oh, and they'll talk to their peers about how, do you remember this? And like, people know everyone and kind of know everyone's like families and stuff. So how they can enroute each other like that way. I find so interesting too and how that creates more of our history. I was talking with my coworker yesterday. She was like, everyone knows everyone. It's a big little town. Like it's a big town, but so little because everyone knows everyone. Like mm -hmm. it's like the six degree, everyone's related to what's his name? Uh, is, it, is it John or some different person? Or? No, it's like a famous person, Kevin Bacon. It's okay. like everyone, like this, everyone's related to Kevin Bacon in like six degrees. I feel like that's Kenosha, but like within two people. Like <laughs> I think that's hilarious because you don't see that much in other towns, which I think is very interesting for us. Yeah, in a city of about 100,000 that so mm -hmm. many people can be related to each other. Right, yep. It's, it's very funny, especially like I have friends who are like, yeah, I'm related to that person and that person, that person, that person. I'm like, how? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I can definitely see that a lot builds up both in how people are related to each other, but how then there's this shared experiences in Kenosha, yeah. despite also being very diverse as well. Yes. Um, so how would, how would you say the diversity of Kenosha fits into the, I guess this growing history of Kenosha? I think it's the new chapter of Kenosha. I think us being so diverse and especially what occurred a year ago within our city um, everyone is going to have a different opinion on it but when I saw what I saw was our community coming together especially in a time of need in a time of hardship where you do have conflicting situations and conflicting opinions um, I worked in Uptown with Krista Maurer and kind of helped within that area when a lot of that occurred and my main thing I saw was people from different parts of our community coming together and having a genuine conversation about each other's lives. And whenever I was having a conversation with people who wanted to come help, and I said, if you're not doing anything, sit and talk to someone you don't know. Have that conversation. How can you create that relationship with someone else? Because you're gonna be more thankful that you created that relationship that you can potentially further on in your lives and to grow our community more as a whole. And I think that's, that definitely is our new chapter, is having those conversations where we're able to sit and not argue about our opinions, but just know about each other's lives and what each other has been through. Um, and I think I've seen a lot of change within our past year within the community. You see a lot more community events where people from different parts of our community are coming together to create us better as a whole. And obviously we're gonna have times where it's gonna be negativity where people aren't going to get along with each other but I think that's the best part of this new chapter in creating this history because it did create a big change within our community and especially our students a lot of the students I work with come from the not best parts of town but they are more willing to have those conversations and creating those relationships I would say yeah how, how did you see um just last year's events affect your students? It was hard on a lot of them. They had a really rough time transitioning back, especially with COVID and virtual learning. Um, our school was delayed getting in, like teachers were delayed getting into the building because we did have the National Guard there. And it was like when we started my first day of work, we still had National Guard in the building. And to, to, for me to see that, I've never witnessed anything like that. Um, it was very interesting, but our students, we always were like, we always had that open mindset for them that if they needed someone to talk to, that we were there. Um, and some of them, it took a while for them to open up about how they felt and their feelings, but they knew that they had that support system behind them. And I know as educators, that's our first goal is for them to know that we are their support system more than anything and I, that was the most beautiful part of turning my life into education and being an educator was knowing that I'm a support system for a student. Yeah, I'm, I'm just imagining what it would be like right now to have the National Guard just in your building while you're 
working. Um, yeah, it was. So I was a special ed aide last year, and this year I'm a teacher. So last year was my first time kind of being in any part of education. And kind of, I went to Trumper, so I never really knew Bradford's building well. So I kind of walked around the building just to get my senses. And I mean, they were in, they were in there if anything were happening, but nothing really happened. And by the next day, they were gone. They were playing basketball in their gym. And <laughs> some of them were super nice and were like, hey, how's it going? And it was, it was, de it was not what I expected. My first day of work to be in a building where a National Guard was stationed for a while, or our president at the time walked through days before, and I was like, oh, okay, this is different. Like, not expecting this, but okay, this is we're just gonna go with the flow. But it was an interesting way to start my first year in education, and it kind of you take what's thrown at you in education is what I learned. You go. So, oh well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But so that was your that was your first time in education, and you'd been, you know, you went to Nebraska and you mm -hmm. came back. Yeah. What were, What were you doing beforehand? Um, so I worked at Sonnenberg ABA Consultants mm -hmm. as a behavioral tech for kids on the autism spectrum for about a year, and then before that, I had like I call it my gap year. I um <laughs> I kind of just was figuring out my life. Mm -hmm. I um I bartended full time. I worked with a woman who no longer lives in town, but I was her assistant for a Dance for Parkinson's dance class, okay. which I had an internship with in college, and it was an amazing experience. Um, it's a lot of dance therapy. Um, I ran for Miss Kenosha. I ran for a few other pageants so I, to potentially get to Miss Wisconsin, and that was quite, it was a, I call it my journey year too as well. It was like the find yourself, figure out what you want to do with your life year. So you did pageants and ran for Miss Kenosha. I did. Have you talked about them or what, what is, yeah. what is all that? Um, okay, so Miss Kenosha is part of the Miss America organization. It's one of the top scholarship funding programs in the United States for women of, I believe it's 17 to 26. Yeah, 26 or 25, one of the two ages. Um, I was approached by a friend who ran, she was Miss Racine, um, and a, then another friend who was also Miss Kenosha, and they were like, you should do this, like it's a really good opportunity for you. Um, so I thought about it long and hard, and I was like, you know what, what do I have to lose? It's something to get invested in, and to just challenge myself. I am not the best at public speaking when it comes to large groups, so I definitely have like that like anxious part, my hands get like super sweaty and mm -hmm. I like stumble over my words. Um, but yeah, it was about a three month process to prep for Miss Kenosha. Miss Kenosha is one of the larger of the Miss America organization local pageants within the state of Wisconsin. Um, so I believe there were like 15 girls when I did it. So at the time we competed in swimsuit, which they no longer do anymore, thank God, because that was the worst part of it. I hated walking around on stage in swimsuit and heels. Talent, on stage question, and your evening wear. And Miss America has changed their organization, so you no longer compete in swimsuit, but you compete about your social impact initiative. So that's essentially what are you going to promote your year of service. Mm -hmm. So mine was everyone can dance, creating dance opportunities for all ages and abilities, which is still something I work with today. It's kind of in my back pocket, but something I am always striving for. Um, it was an amazing experience. I don't remember it because I blacked out while I was on stage. I only remember like parts of things because wow. your adrenaline's so big. Um, but it's, it's a great experience for young women to get into. I mean, I didn't place or I didn't win, but I still got a $500 scholarship from the um, Kenosha Junior Women's Club that I used for a class. And it was amazing. It was, you, the friendships you make with some of the girls is phenomenal. And I actually ended up doing one more after that. Um, I ran in Wisconsin Sweeps, which is like people from all over the state. Mm -hmm. And they give out three titles at that. And that was very fun because that was just like a one day you go in and you do it instead of like a three month prep. Um, but it's, an, a, it's a great organization to be a part of and it's definitely something I'm very thankful I've had in my life. So I always promote like girls and like try it. it. There's nothing to lose, something to gain confidence through and 
it's definitely something I really enjoyed within my time moving back to Kenosha. Yeah, it sounds like it's, I mean, it's different from what I expected. Yeah. Um, there's all that whole, that community service aspect I didn't know oh, about. Oh, it's huge. It's a huge community service. Actually, that was what my scholarship was from the Junior Women's Club is how my community service affected my social impact initiative. Mm -hmm. So like right now, you'll see Ms. Kenosha doing many different um, events throughout the town. Um, and I, I love the community service aspect that that brought for myself, and I think that's why I did that pageant very okay. much. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm seeing your, I'm seeing where your community, your community service has affected, whether it be um, being together in uptown downtown area mm -hmm. um, during a period of during a period of writing, but also teaching, and yeah. then of course dance has been a big part of big part of your life in all of this as well. Yeah. So how how is how have you seen dance in particular, um, I guess, how do you see that um, affect Kenosha or what your goals with um, service, service for Kenosha is yeah. through, through dance, it seems? I would say through arts more so. Um, arts is a big part of Kenosha and mm -hmm. I think our history. Um, we are very, we're, we're not a lot of people think we are an arts-rooted com community, but we really are. Um, I mean, we have a very large choral fest throughout the year within KUSD. Same with Bandorama and Orchestra Fest. And then, of course, you have the KUSD Theater Arts, which goes and competes nationally every year. And they are a phenomenal group. And I think instilling arts within our younger part of our community allows for that creative freedom and that creative thought, which, in my opinion, art is a great form of therapy, no matter if it's dance singing, acting, drawing, painting, any part of it, it allows a student and or a child to let out their emotional feelings if they can't speak about it. And one thing I definitely, we all definitely saw last year was those boards, which were beautiful and created a huge light in a time of darkness, I thought. And that's what was allowed so many of us to find positivity. And I think within myself, Dance is what I use when I can't tell the words, and that's how I see a lot of my students lately, because we're in such a weird time where a lot of kids, their mental health isn't at the best point, where they feel like they have that safe space to have that conversation, and that's where I create my safe space for myself and for my students, especially when I teach dance, is I say, this is your safe space. This is where you're allowed to feel the way you need to feel. If you're angry, be angry. If you're upset, be upset. If you're happy, be happy. Express those emotions here and leave it here. Because this can be your form of therapy to let things out when words can't come. And I sh my, that's my goal for my classroom is to allow my classroom to be that safe space for my students as well. Yeah, so art says expression. Yes. Um, and getting Getting those feelings out there, and mm -hmm. I know when you when you talk about the board, um, all the billboards, all the art on the billboards, that's mm -hmm. what I remember. I don't remember the the car like the car cars. Lot, I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember those. I remember seeing people painting and mm -hmm. seeing those because those were those lasted too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, so, what would you like to see for Kenosha's future? I would like to see more of those positive conversations where we don't see the negativity. Like you and I sitting here, we may have different opinions and different views on things, but we can still sit and listen to each other in a light and agree to disagree on certain things and understand that my opinion may be different from yours, but we can still be cohesive as a group and as a community. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're slowly getting there. Um, but that's not just our community, that's our world that we live in right now. But if we can start within our community to have those conversations and more of these 30 for six or 60 for 30, <laughs> I think that would be the greatest thing ever because it allows a positive conversation and positive moments to make those connections and those relationships. And also that networking that we have. As long as, if we keep networking as a community, we can be such a strong community where we can build not just within our infrastructure but within our businesses and within our families where not just certain people feel safe, where we all feel safe and we can allow people to come into our community and create it to be better than it already is. 
Wow. Yeah. Really just getting to know each other sort yeah. of um, even more because that, that, I mean, this almost goes all the way around about to how you talked about people have relationships with each other in our, mm -hmm. in our town and it's, or they might like literally relate to each other, mm -hmm. but also just building those smaller conversation relationships, yeah. just knowing each other more. Yeah. And that's like my favorite thing. I work many jobs in Kenosha. So I have my full-time job and I coach dance, I teach dance, I bartend on the weekends. And I think that my, that's my favorite part about my bartending job is having those small conversations and like how do we, how can we relate to one another? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's also grown myself and the people around me is I always am like, how can you network yourself? How can you conversate with other people to so you relate more. And I've seen the people around me grow just as much in those situations. Okay. Yeah. So if there's anything mi we've missed in conversation or if um, there's something you'd like to say to the Kenosha community at large or um, Kenosha leaders, mm -hmm. um, what, w what would that be? I think it would tie back to not just having the conversation, but listening to how others feel around you. Because you can listen and empathize with someone, but if you aren't really listening and taking in to how others feel and how we all are impacted by situations, then how are we gonna better ourselves? So mm -hmm. really like li listening in those conversations is also very important and something I've learned to do more and to be better at. And I think that's only the only way we can grow is if not just having those conversations, but listening to the others in those conversations. Yeah, so not not just talking. Yeah. Us. So yeah. We, we can talk at each other. We can as talk <laughs> at each other and I can't like take in anything you say, but if I'm taking in what I say, what you say, when you take in what I say, the conversation grows and mm -hmm. creates more of an impact is what I've learned through a lot of things. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for sitting down to have yeah. this conversation with me. This has been great. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me.